Hello everyone, it is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. We're back here with another edition of Budget Magic, and boy do we have a sweet one this week. Uh, ever since Magic Origins was spoiled, Starfield of Nyx has been my favorite card in the set. I'm not exactly sure why, but that card is just so cool. I figured I had to build a deck around it, and to my surprise, this deck is actually really good. It beats up on Abzan, beats up on Mono Red, a little iffy against blue counter spell decks. Otherwise, I think this can actually, like, some sort of framework like this can actually be a player in standard, at least until rotation this fall. Looking at 21 bucks online, $55 in paper, so a great deal for an actual competitive uh, standard deck. And, yeah, let's talk about the cards. So, obviously, the namesake card, the big deal, the reason this deck exists, Starfield of Nyx. Uh, four and one white mana, so five converted mana cost, and you get an enchantment that has two abilities. Ability one is at the beginning of your upkeep, you can return an enchantment from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this is basically draw a card, <laughs> but not even draw a card, it's better than that because it goes right to the battlefield, so you're not spending any mana on this card. Super, super powerful in a deck that has a lot of enchantment, which ours just so happens to have. Ability two, if you control five or more enchantments, each other non-aura enchantment becomes a creature and has power and toughness equal to its converted mana cost. So this is basically an opalescence effect. A little different because you need five enchantments on the battlefield. But this ends up being like an overrun part of the time. You get all these enchantments on the battlefield. You play this, they basically, all your other enchantments turn into haste creatures with power and toughness equal to their converted mana cost. And you can go on the beatdown plan and sometimes just win the game on the spot. There's two other cards that really make the deck tick. Sigil of the Empty Thrones. This is a reprint in Magic Origins. Uh, three and two white, so another five mana enchantment. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, put a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying on the battlefield. So this is our finisher. Whenever we cast an enchantment, we get a 4-4 angel, which is a pretty reasonable threat. And when you consider we have a ton of cheap enchantments, there's times when we end up with a whole flock of angels. We have... Uh, 8 or 10 angel tokens, and there's just really no coming back from that for our opponents. And then the other card that makes everything tick is Eidolon of Blossoms. This is another card advantage engine uh, for 4 mana and 2 green, so 2 and 2 green. You get a 2-2 two, two enchantment creature with Constellation, uh, so it has an ability where whenever Eidolon of Blossoms or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. So this is another way to turn through our deck. It is an awesome card to get back with Starfield of Nyx in the late game. Being a 2-2, it's kind of fragile, so it dies fairly often. But we get it back in the late game, and we can just kind of go off with this card. We have so many cheap enchantments that work well with it. It almost gives us this combo deck feel, where we go from... There's been times, there's been games where we've gotten our entire board wrath down to a Starfield of Nyx, had an idol on a Blossom and some other stuff in the graveyard, and in the course of a turn or two, we can go from empty boarded with a star field to having eight animated enchantments, 10 angel tokens, and just winning the game on the spot. Like, it is super powerful in this deck. Um, the rest of the cards, so those are the three big engine cards. The rest of the cards are designed to work around these cards and make these cards better. One of the problems with Starfield and Sigil and even Eidolon is that they're kind of slow. They cost five mana, don't impact the board immediately. This might seem like a problem, but you can minimize this problem by switching things up, and instead of fighting against the slowness, we embrace the slowness. Our entire deck is built around stalling out the game until we can get our powerful plays at 4 and 5 mana going. So one of the best ways that we do this is Nyx Fleece Ram. Uh, so one in a white, you get a 0-5 sheep enchantment creature, and it gains you one life at the beginning of your upkeep. This might seem a little funny, but Nyx Fleece Ram is actually pretty insane in Standard at the moment. Obviously not at its best against Control, where gaining life doesn't really matter, but against an aggro deck, this can almost win the game on its own. Gaining one life every turn is a big deal, and it also blocks everything. Um, all the way up to like Siege Rhino, pretty much you can look down a list of commonly played creatures in the format, and discounting Flyers, obviously, Nyx Fleece Ram probably blocks... I don't know, 95% of them, it's just a super wall. And it's also a cheap enchantment, which goes off with our sigils, and our starfields, and our eidolons. The other big piece of the deck is fonts. 
Fonts were this weird cycle, printed in Journey of Nyx. They're enchantments that have an ability that you can sack from the battlefield. So Font of Fertility, for example, is basically a rampant growth that comes on a one-man enchantment. So you can play it for one green, and then whenever you want to, you can sack it, search your library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield tab. Um, then we also have Font of Vigor, two copies of that. So this one's two mana and one white, and you can sack it to gain seven life by paying two and a white. So these are cards that, like I said with Nyx Fleece Ram, are cheap enchantments that trigger all of our finisher cards, our big engine cards, but they're also great ways to grind out the game. Font of Vigor, we can recur Font of Vigor with Starfield of Nyx, which allows us to gain seven life every turn for only three mana, and this by itself can be an aggro deck. Font of Fertility can search for a land every turn for two mana, but the bigger deal here is it triggers all of our spells, our enchantment mana spells, while also ramping us, uh, which allows us to play our Sigils and our Starfields and our Eidolons a turn early, which is kind of nice and helps to minimize the problem of that slowness we were talking about. Uh, the other cool thing with these is with the Opalescence effect on Starfield, if we have, say, five enchantments on the battlefield, all of our enchantments except for Starfield will animate into creatures. If one of these is a font, we can take and sack the font after blocking our opponent's team, and unanimate all of our enchantments, which basically just gives us a free horde of blockers every turn. And then we can reanimate the enchantment again the next turn, block four creatures, sack the, <laughs> sack the font, and just keep cycling through this, which gives us basically endless defense, while also generating value every time we do it. Uh, Verdant Haven is along the same lines. Three mana, it enchants a land, gains us two life when it enters the battlefield, which is nice, we have so much incidental life gain, it's really hard for an aggro deck to beat us. And whenever the enchanted land is tapped for mana, you add one mana of any color. So basically you make your land tap for two mana, whatever color it normally taps for, and then an additional mana of any color. The key thing with this card in our deck is it's a way to go from three mana to five mana, which, like I said before, that's where Starfield is, that's where Sigil is, that's where End Hostilities is, even though we haven't talked about that yet. So it's a way to jump the curve and play those five mana spells a turn early, which is really what we want to be doing. And it's also an enchantment, so it triggers everything. Commune with the Gods. Commune with the Gods is one in a green. You look at the top five cards or reveal the top five cards of your library. You can put a creature enchantment from them into your hand, put the rest in the graveyard. So this is a way for us to find our missing pieces. Um, if we need a Sigil or a Starfield or an Eidolon, this is our way to get there, and it also fills our graveyard with enchantments, which is really important uh, considering we have the Starfield going, which really wants our graveyard to be full of enchantments. So it kind of works on multiple levels in our deck. Uh, we also have the odd-looking Citadel Siege. One thing this deck really, really wanted was a Spear of Safety or Ghostly Prison effect, something to really slow down creatures. Citadel Siege is as close as it gets in Standard. Obviously, it's not as good against Go Wide Aggro decks, since it can only deal with one creature. But where it is very good, better than those other cards, is it completely locks down one big threat. So, a Siege Rhino, a Dragon Lord, um, any of those type of cards. Citadel Siege on Dragons taps it every time before it gets to attack. So, it's a way to protect ourselves uh, from one big creature that would really cause us problems. Uh, which is fine, because we can usually hold off aggro decks with our life gain. So, but having one big creature that can dominate the game can be a problem for us. And I've been surprised how often I've sent it on cons, which is an ability where at the beginning of your combat each turn, you put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. So sometimes you get these weird hands where you have like two Nyx Fleece Rams and a Citadel Siege, and you got the defense sewn up with the Nyx Fleece Ram, so you don't really need to tap down a creature. So you just set the Citadel Siege on cons and <laughs> make your Nyx Fleece Rams huge. Uh, if you think a 0-5 Nyx Fleece Ram is annoying, wait till you see an 8-13 Nyx Fleece Ram. <laughs> so this card has been better than I imagined. Banishing Light. I would love to be able to play four Banishing Lights in the main deck. When Banishing Light just sits on the battlefield, it is the best removal spell in the format. Uh, it kills anything for three mana. The problem with Banishing Light is it can also get you blown out if someone can destroy it. So you exile an Ashiok or some annoying Planeswalker, and then your opponent manages to get rid of your O-Ring, they get back to permanent, and it just feels so bad. 
So we ended up going with two in the main and another two in the board. So if we're playing a matchup, like um, blue-black control doesn't really have any way to deal with an O-ring. So we can take and bring in all four O-rings, use those to deal with planeswalkers and such, and go from there. So uh, two in the main, two in the board. Then the one of we have two mass removal spells. We have a copy of End Hostilities. I started off with four of these in the deck. Then I realized that even with our ramp, having ten five mana plays is just really clunky. So we ended up going to one in the main and three more in the sideboard. And in some matchups, we can trim down on our other five mana plays, like a sigil or two, and bring in more end hostilities. Because in some matchups, we really want it. Like, it's so good. Our deck doesn't have many creatures, and the creatures we do have are relatively expendable, especially when you consider we can get them back with Starfield. So it ends up being like a one-sided wrath most of the time. Faded Retribution, really expensive, but this one is an instant and it can destroy all creatures and all planeswalkers. And that last word was really the important one. Our deck is a little bit soft to planeswalkers and having a way to get rid of an Elspeth along with all of the tokens she generates at instant speed, no less, is just a really nice miser card to have in the deck. The other three main deck cards are one ofs. These are what I would consider flex slots in the deck. I honestly haven't been too impressed with any of them, so if you want to try something else, you're more than welcome to. But we have one Bow of Nylea. This was another way to gain life. All the creature-centric abilities don't do too much, and doing two damage to a creature with flying isn't that great. So I'm not super excited about having this in the deck, but I'm not sure what a better option is. Spear of Helioid is kind of the same way. We don't really have creatures, so giving our creatures plus one plus one isn't all that appealing. I thought that maybe it would be another way to deal with a big creature, uh, with the pay two and a or two white and one colorless destroy target creature that dealt damage to you this turn. But in practice, it just never really worked out. I either didn't draw it when I wanted to, or would draw in matchups where we were playing a bunch of aggro like tokeny things and paying three to kill a a dragon fodder token just isn't that exciting. Last one was Helioid, God of the Sun. We can turn him on with devotion sometimes. Uh, which is fine, like a 5-6 indestructible is fine. I was thinking that the ability to create a token, we could, in the late game, create two or three tokens a turn and kind of win the game that way. The thing I realized is, though, we don't really need that. Like, once we get a Starfield or Sigil Online, or even an Eidolon of Blossom with a bunch of mana, we're going to win the game anyway, so Helioid just doesn't really do much for us. So those are three slots that I'd be interested in trying different things in. I would stick to enchantments, though, because we really want the critical mass of enchantments to trigger all of our enchantment adders cards and to be turned on by Starfield of Nyx. Uh, the mana base, six forests, six plains, four temples of plenty, four blossoming sands, and four radiant fountain. Uh, I have started jamming radiant fountain into any deck that can play it. Like, the two life really matters, and the opportunity cost is so low. Foundry of the console... Uh, which is a new card from Magic Origins, which lets you, it's another colorless land, uh, and in the late game, you can pay five, tap, and sack it, and get two 1-1 one, one flyers. That would be another option in this slot, but for now, I just really like that our deck can totally live for so long. Like, our deck is slow, but we embrace the slowness by gaining a ton of life, and that gives us time to get our incredibly powerful late game online. Like, seriously, the combination of Starfield and Sigil and Eidolon Blossoms I don't think there is a better late game in Standard. Like, we can outgrind anyone. We just got to get there, and Radiant Fountain is an important way of getting there. Sideboard time, I mentioned three more end hostilities. Started with them in the main, moved them to the board. They can come in for other expensive plays and creature-heavy matchups. Two more Banishing Lights, when our opponent can't kill enchantments very easily. This is great removal to have. Triggers all our enchantment man matter stuff. Bull of Nylea. Naturalize, this could be any enchantment removal spell, uh, Reclamation Sage, etc., etc. But we do want this effect in our deck. Um, Silk Wrap, this is the little creature Oblivion Ring. <laughs> when it enters the battlefield, you can exile target creature with converted mana cost 3 or less. Very good against some rushy aggro deck. One card that is annoying for us in the aggro decks is like a Goblin Rabble Master. Because while it can't get through our next Fleece Ram and we gain a bunch of life, we don't kill it very easily. So it just keeps making all these tokens. And eventually, after like 10 turns, it makes so many tokens that it kills us anyway. 
So Silkraft is an answer to that. Also things like Corsair Crufix, which just generate value without attacking. Finally, Plummet. Plummet. When I started, I did not have any Plummet in the deck. Then I lost a very good matchup against a red deck because I realized our deck cannot deal with Stormbreath there, <laughs> Dragon. That card just absolutely wrecks us. Our Citadel Siege can't tap it. Our Sigil Tokens can't block it. Our Banishing Lights can't exile it. Spear of Helioid can't destroy it. Like, pretty much it's Wrath or Bust once our opponent plays a Stormbreath. So Plummet is our way to deal with that. It takes care of Stormbreath, but also any other Dragon Lords that could be a problem. Uh, so it's just a solid sideboard card at the moment. Very good against, like, Mardu Dragons, which is another deck that could be challenging with just so many big hasty flyers that get around our Nyx Fleece Ram plan and so on. So really solid color grid for the sideboard. Anyway, that's the deck. Uh, I've had a lot of success with it, like I said, and I've also just had so much fun playing it. If you like grindy decks, you like these long, intricate matchups, and it, and it has a kind of combo feel to it, you're going to love this deck. It's super cheap. Got to try it out. I'm, I'm very excited about it, and there's a lot more uh, ways this deck can possibly go. Even if this isn't the Starfield deck, I really think there is a Starfield deck out there that's going to be super powerful. So give it a shot. Brew with it. Let me know what you come up with, because I'm really excited uh, to keep playing this strategy in Standard, because it's just so unlike the typical Standard decks that are just bouncing creatures off of each other. Like This is so much more appealing to me. Um, it almost feels like a very watered-down version of a Legacy Enchantress deck. Uh, so anyway, hope you enjoy the videos, uh, and I will talk to you all soon.